Hello again and welcome back to another show of the Final Flight podcast. Myself, James, is back and we are here with another Cheltenham Antipost Countdown show. Um, the boys are looking forward to it and we are once again blessed with a fantastic special guest, Tom Bellamy, jockey. How are you, sir? Are you looking forward to tonight and thanks for coming on? Yeah, I've been looking forward to it, yeah. Uh, it's always good to get on these sorts of things and support you guys. Um, yeah, hope I can give some, some sort of interesting info at some point. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, we do appreciate that. Like say we had some really good guests come on lately. And that uh, when you guys give up your time for us, we you know we massively appreciate it. It's great for us as fans to, to chat to you guys as well and get your insight. You know, people in the know seem to know a lot more than we do, or it is when they come to Rich's picks anyway. But um I'll come to you then, Rich Joe. You're looking forward to you had another good another good weekend, once it? We had some good stuff going on. Are you ready to talk Cheltenham again? Yeah, hundred percent Can't wait, mate. It's what it's all about, isn't it? It's what every, well, that's what's on everyone's mind, sort of. This, you know, as soon as King George passes, it's all about Cheltenham, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, Rich, we're looking forward to the King George and the festive period. We've got our Christmas special on Thursday, but obviously, you know, Cheltenham's on the horizon now once we're over the new year. Yeah, it's getting there now, isn't it? Some great racing, like you said at the weekend. Uh, I'm sure we'll go through it. But yeah, there's some uh, interesting horses that are out uh, for us to see. And hopefully you don't put a pickup that gets done in about two seconds, but we'll crack on anyway. Mm. So what we normally do for this show is we obviously talk a few, uh, talk around some of uh, the viewpoints or the, the big points from the weekend. And then we put up, um, we'll obviously come to you, Tom, and get a, uh, talk about a few of your rides and a few of your horses you're looking forward to. And then we'll put our Antipost picks up and uh, our week nine selections. So we're going to get straight into it. I mean, a couple of my selections were running this weekend. And I'll come to you first, Tom, if I can. Um, the first one's Dysa Enos. She obviously run against the Gelders. Did you manage to watch that race? And sort of, what did you think about it? I thought she did quite well. Yeah, she's a, she's a very good horse, isn't she? And I know she's very highly regarded by connections. And um, I'm unfortunate enough to sit near Paddy Brennan in the waiting room, the lunatic, and he um, he raves about us. So he um, yeah, he, he was a, a happy man. Yeah, I mean, I thought just, I mean, obviously a lot, a lot, I mean, you know, Rich and Joe went against it on the preview and I just thought she'd have enough class to get past these guys. I mean, I'll come to you, Joe and Rich. I'll come to you first, Joe. I mean, she, I thought she travelled through the race. She still put a couple of little, obviously, jumps in there, but she's certainly got an engine in the speed for it, I think, and she obviously enjoys Cheltenham. What are your thoughts after it? It seems you backed against her. Yeah, 100%, mate. Um, was, was impressive. Money came late on, didn't it? I think she was about six to four in the morning. About seven to four the night before, and then went off five to six. So obviously the money did come hard. Bucky sort of ran away, and when you look through, I mean, the only real one with some good form in there was Beat the Bat, um, and she she's beat him, I'd say, pretty comfortably. Obviously, Beat the Bat edged out. Welcome to Cartree's first time out, um, and then Beat the Beat the Bat couldn't sort of sustain that. So yeah, very impressive to be honest. Are you worried? Are you at any point worried about your brighter days ahead selection, or is she going to challenge her as well, Charlie? No, mate. I think the Irish still keep this one. <laughs> we shall see. What did you think, Rich? I thought it were a good performance, me personally. I thought the the put her well placed and she, and she kicked on, showed that little turn of pace she's got. I think she'll uh, appreciate a little bit of further up in trip for the mares as well. I think. In fact, no, I think it's same trip. Apologies, that's the chase. I think she gets the trip. She enjoys Cheltenham. I think she'll be very hard to beat, me. What about you? Yeah, I was quite very impressed, actually. Uh, I'd be a fan of hers now for the Mayor's novice hurdle. You know, Paddy didn't really get stuck into her uh, until after the last. Mm. Uh, she's the one that was going by far the easiest in that race and then jumped the last and then got stuck into her and she pulled up, pulled clear away from the Zacchio, is it, by two lengths. Uh, I did read somewhere that she recorded the fastest entry speed of the whole meeting going to the last hurdle. I think it was about 33 miles an hour, I think, was the stat. So <clears throat> she looked very fast, and I think she jumps better than Brighter Days Ahead, and she's probably is quicker than her. So for me, she's probably the one to be on. Yeah, I probably agree with that. I do think, and I do think sort of the faster they go, the better it'll be for her. But fingers crossed, I'm pretty solid on her, and I think she's got a good, uh, good chance. Uh, fantastic. So I'm going to move on to another one then. Tom, I'll come to you again, obviously. A horse that you're you've been quite close to linked with and they've ridden before. Broadway boy obviously won again, set himself um what looks like the brand advisory target. I mean, you know, you've ridden him. What what are your thoughts on that one? I mean, I thought it would it were brilliant to watch him to do that from the front once again. Yeah, he's um he's the perfect racehorse at this stage, to be honest. Mm. Like he does um he's an absolute sort of gent to deal with. He, he he you see him going around in a race, he's saving energy all the time, he's very straightforward. You can Give him a kick into a fence. You can 
sit and he'll go and pop one. Like he's just he, he's a dream to ride. He, he's a little bit novicey still. Um, mm. Two little mistakes need to be ironed out, but um, I think he's getting better with each run. Like the mistake he made with me, he didn't do one of those this time. Do you know what I mean? Like and that mm. was rider error anyway. But like you know, you, you sort of want from a, from a racehorse from a jockey's point of view, you, you want. You want to be a, you want them to be good enough that if you make a mistake on their back, they can sort it out for themselves. And he just about managed it the day I rode him, but he was better again this time. And uh, yeah, look, he's he's just improving every time he goes to the races, and he um, he's bottomless. Like I really, I I don't think we've seen the best of him yet, and I, I think he'll he'll probably end up a you know a proper stayer in time. Like whether that's not like saying any silly targets or anything like that, but a national of some sort probably one day would be on the horizon and um the brown advisory first and foremost but um i think yeah that run on on saturday has really boosted his credentials yeah i mean i'd completely agree with everything you've just said there i think he's one of them horses that he just seems to stay all the way to the line and like you say there he might he's made the odd mistake in the past but he's learning on you know he's, he can sort himself out quickly so it shows the amount of stamina he's got I mean, I'll come to you, Rich. I mean, I, I was really, really imp- I mean, um, I was really impressed with him on at the weekend. I think he's, he's going to, I mean, I've got stay away fame, my selection for the Browns. I know Connections mentioned the Browns. I think if he goes there, he's a, he's a proper live player. What do you think? Oh, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> I was impressed with him when he uh, bolted up the time before, which I think Tom was, was on him. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, he just blew me away. And then yeah. I was on him again on Saturday. He's still, like I say, he's still very novicey. Uh, made a couple of mistakes on the final circuit, but I just thought his attitude to dig in and he, he dropped back a little bit and he did dug back in to uh, get back up with three hundred through five. And like you say, he stayed on gamely. And I think the jump at the last, he, after his errors, there was two good jumps. The second and the last, I thought, were very impressive. You know, I just think uh, he's definitely going to keep on improving. And uh, yeah, all roads lead to the Brown Advisory, I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, what do you think on that, Joe? I mean, you can't really not agree with with everyone what everyone said. The performance itself just shows that he deserves a crack at the top the top table. The way he's sort of winning these races, I mean, it just it's like nothing will go past him, isn't it? No, hundred percent, mate. I mean, like Rich and Tom said, he still looks a little novicey. Um, I know the um, ITV panel were talking about John Bon and Edward Stone the week before about sort of landing galloping and I thought sometimes he didn't do that but he he just seemed to be very game not want to be passed and then turning for home he sort of gathered up the bridle again and then once once Sam got stuck into him he sort of went went again and looked like the horse had just sort of carried on and I mean jumping a second last I thought there's no there's no way he's getting caught I know he but I would say only one he won by one one and three quarter lengths but I thought it was comfortable in the end. He's been some good horses in there. Protector at looked himself. Um, he didn't blow out. So, you know, that's a good horse to be beaten. And then 300 through five as well as no mug. So, yeah, it was definitely an, another improvement, should we say. Um, and I'll be excited to see where he goes next, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, you know, you've got to be, you've got to be on, on the back of him, I think, a few times when he comes um, next time he runs. But, yeah, it's definitely a, a stay, a stay, a proper stay in the making. And I love that sort of horse that's just going to really... Any time he's asked, I mean, you'll be able to say there, Tom, you know, when he's asked for an effort, he just he just pours it on, doesn't he? Last point. Yeah, he, he keeps finding. Um, and he's perfect. Like, he pricks the ears up the running. He's not going to go and win. I know I won by a long way on him, but that was obviously against novices off, off level weight. But he... Um, mm. I, don't think, I don't think he's going to go and bolt up with Sammy looking between his legs, put it that way. I think he's just he just does what he has to do. As long as that head's in front of the line, what more can you ask? No, I think that's I think that's spot on I, mean, I love that in the horse. It was just, you know, when you ask them for effort, they're going to give you that effort. And he's certainly one that does that. Uh so that leads me on to my next horse that I wanted to talk about. Another one that I actually put up last week. Um a horse called Shanna Bob. Um obviously in the Albert Bartlett trial stepped up to three mile Nicky Henderson and uh, Nico on board. I mean I obviously put him up for the Albert Bartlett. I think he's an absolute out and out stayer. Probably needs even further than the Bartlett trip, but I thought he did a hell of a lot wrong and still managed to get up and win. You know, obviously the form might be questioned who he's beat there, but I just thought for his second run at the course uh, to do that at Cheltenham, I thought in per- person I was quite impressed and he's you know, shortened up a little bit. Obviously, and I'd like to think the Albert Bartlett's the target, but obviously he looks like a chaser, a staying chaser in the making sort of thing. But I just think he's got them sort of credentials for that. I mean, I've come to the lads first, Rich. 
mean, what did you think of it? I know it looked, it looked sort of like hard work watching if we obviously we backed him, but in the end, I thought he won it quite snug. Yeah, uh, it was work them like, wasn't it? I thought, I mean, there's going to be a lot of improvement. I think that was only second run, so yeah, I thought his jumping was a bit ropey to start with, but he got better. Uh, I thought he got outpaced coming down the hill approaching the bend, uh, but I just think he outstayed them. That's how he won it. Uh, he just outstayed everybody, and like I say, he probably doesn't need further. But no, it's a good, uh, a good effort. Like I say, it looks like a proper stay in the making, and uh, be exciting when he goes over fences for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'll come to you, Joe. I mean, he does look a proper stay, and like I say, a little bit novice, but that—that's you know, I'm, I'm allowing that. And the second run, what what were your thoughts on the on the race and the performance in general? Yeah, I thought it was very very impressive because he was very novice. I know Rich said he got outpaced, uh, sort of coming around the home turn. But if you watch again, Nico gets stuck in a pocket and he wants to get working into him, but he doesn't want to push the horse into the horse in front. So he's just sort of keeping him ticking over and has to switch him out as soon as the rail disappears. He gets a bit keen, the head goes up, the rest of the horse's head down. Then he gives him a kick and he starts going again. Um, yeah, like I say, he was very green, but it, it was impressive. I think I'd prefer to see a novice get stuck into and win a race like this than win on the bridle and then turn up at Cheltenham. You know, you want to see that the find under pressure and, you know, obviously Nico's got stuck into him and it, he, he has prevailed up the hill. So, yeah, like I say, again, impressive. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's obviously fair points. So I've come to you, Tommy, and obviously you rode in the race. I mean, the sort of race that it was, they did seem to be quite bunched for most of the way. Would you say that as... Any sort of effect on like these novices are only in a couple of runs? Could that affect them in any way? Wouldn't affect them. Might just not sort of see it. I, I'd say it didn't see that horse to his best. I don't think that was his true sort of running there, you know. Mm. He um it uh, for me, I think it was a questionable form race. Um as you said, we were bunched for a lot of it, we weren't very slow. Um and I think the sort of, you see how many horses still had a chance at the top of the hill. That sort of tells you that. But um, mm -hmm. like you said, he you know he's done a lot wrong, but still managed to pull out. I thought Nick would give him a, a beautiful ride. You know he'd done a little bit too much for the first half of the race, so he waited for as long as he possibly could to sort of produce his effort, and um, he'd kept enough in reserve to do that. But the Albert Bar, like it's it's a it's a brutal race, isn't it? You know, like it's, it's it leaves its mark on horses, and that, like I, I sometimes think. With the exception of like stay away phase, obviously come back and, and producing it this time, isn't it? But um, a lot of them don't go on from it, and I just think sometimes I'm not saying you leave your you know leave leave your sort of ability there, but it's it, it can really bottom horses. And I, for me, I feel this lad's got a bit more class than that. Um, mm. I don't know if they might consider coming back in trip. I don't know. I, I don't know. But I just thought the way he was keen going going around there just looked to me like the. They're not going to go slow in Albert Bartler, are they? But um, it looked to me like he might just appreciate a stronger gallop, which over three miles is not always guaranteed, is it? No, that's 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 a fair point. Like I say, I mean, we'll have to look back at the likes of um, your monk fishes and, and and horses like that. You know, the top classy horses who come out of the Albert Bartler and then obviously have their issues later on. So it'd be interesting to see what Nick, Nicky um, decides to do. Uh, but yeah, like you say, I think the form might be questioned, but I think he did a lot wrong. He still managed to win, and it'd be interesting to see where they go with him next. But um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful looking horse, and it's one I'm going to hopefully get on side uh, for as the season goes along. Lovely. Right then, I'm going to ask uh, about one more then, uh, and it's a pretty crazy race, obviously, that we had for the weekend. I had it up there, but I've lost it. Um, you know, I'll come to you, Tom, if I can. I mean, you rode in the race, but uh, I actually backed your, your horse on the weekend. It was Grandeur Dame. Uh, you managed to get yeah. a place from there, so thanks for that. Um, <laughs> uh, what what did you think to that race? And from your point of view, where in the world did Fugitive come from? Well, my instructions from Alan King were um, pop out, get a good start. Like this horse, he doesn't have to make the run, but he has made the run on his last couple of wins anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, pop out, good start, get yourself a nice position, which was perfect. You know, over the first few, I'm mm. in my comfort zone. Everything was perfect. Well, next thing. Charlie Deutsch and, and Bryony, like their two horses suddenly took each other on a bit and off they went on the front end. I, I couldn't go. My horse, he can he can trap. He can he can go fast. Like and he, he was flat out for the majority. So I I had to accept that and sort of sit ten lengths off someone. 
seven or eight yeah. lengths off them and the tempo of the race was even where I was was unbelievable so like mm. it was it was a proper strong race and I can see I can see how Gavin was flat out on Fugitive that's for sure and um, look he's giving him a great ride but he, he's given him a brilliant ride but I, I think he wouldn't mind me saying he probably couldn't have been sort of any closer anyway if you know what I mean like he looked flat yeah. out didn't he and he was pushing him after sort of three out and he yeah he, he was he was lucky they'd gone so hard up front but he, yeah he timed it to perfection yeah, I mean, it was just it was just a crazy watch, to be honest. I mean, I come to you, Rich. I mean, you know, we, we all sort of back to whoever we backed. Um, I know a few were on Il Ridotto as well, and and you know, I mean, the ride that Gavin Sheehan's gave Fugitive there to get him up from from flying from the back there, I just thought it was incredible. Fair play to him, I think. How about you? No, it was a good ride. You know, like you say, where did he come from? You know, uh, Bryony sent Il Ridotto. I thought quite early from. I think he was clear from the second. Mm. Uh, whether or not he ran out of steam or got lonely up front, but yeah, it was a slightly gutting for her because I, th I thought she had it in the bag, and then next thing you, you know, Gavin's coming through on fugitive, and he gets he gets he gets up, and no, it was a good race to watch actually, very uh, very good. Yeah, and a little bit of shame that uh, obviously Thunder. I think a couple of you know, were you on Thunder Rock, John? He just didn't, didn't go didn't go yard really with his jumping, did he? But fugitive, wow, unbelievable. Come on. No mate, I um I was I didn't I wasn't on um Thunder Rock. I was interested in Montreal, but come to the day I only had one bet on the race oh, and it was sorry, yeah. fugitive to place. Um and you know, <laughs> turning round the bend, I thought, go on, just give him a kick and get him get him a nick third or something. And then jumping over the second, it was a bit like you know when St stay away fair looked beaten and then the horse just come out of Harry's hands at the last. Mm. The horse just seemed to lock on and just go and it was so impressive. I mean, that's why we all love racing, isn't it? You know, stories like that. I mean, if you're on Il Rodoto, you're gutted. But if you're just a, a fan tuning on the race or watching, it's it's brilliant to see the horse just get up. I mean, it was a great battle, to be fair. Il Rodoto kept finding, but um, Fugitive was just too strong up that hill. But yeah, brilliant race. Loved it. It's boosted your stage star form. Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it was just incredible and 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 one that we won't forget. And I don't think Gavin Sheen will forget, but just to see a horse gallop, I mean, it gave me champ vibes at the festival a few years back, obviously, looking completely beaten out of it. And then just to come home like that, like a steam train, just those are the sort of um, races you want to see. I mean, just, just fantastic. So congratulations to them and well done to anyone who backed him. Uh, right, that's sort of it from the big point. So if I can, Tom, I'm going to come to you. Just, we're just going to look back on a couple of your rides that we've obviously enjoyed watching and just get you sort of, your point of view on it really and obviously there's no real other place to start them if we can with broadway boy uh when you won on there i mean we sort of ask the guests to sort of maybe just talk us a little bit through you know what was your plan for the race you know did everything go to plan were there any key points where you thought you maybe were in trouble or do you just think it were a bit of a breeze in the end what, what were your thoughts on that um no not really yeah no it was pretty straightforward he's, he's a very straightforward horse to ride it was a um, bar that one fence where, as I said earlier in the show, it was a bit of a brain sort of fog moment from the jockey. But um, yeah, no, these things happen and we learn from our mistakes. But um, yeah, so yeah, Mr. Coffees obviously can can go, you know, he near enough made the run in a Grand National. So he was he was lining up upside me. I was thinking I might have to take a lead here. And mm -hmm. I was lucky I got a good start, ping the first and away we went. And um yeah, look, I'm not. I won't bore you too much, but it was it was very straightforward and like yeah, fence by fence. I was I was able to do whatever I wanted, you know. Like it was, if I thought I'd done a done a bit much one furlong, I, I could sort of drag him into the bottom of a fence and get get some air into his lungs. And if if I felt a bit of pressure coming on the outside, I give him a kick into them and and he wing and, and nick a half length. So it was it was a dream ride and and yeah, sort of big big winner for me. You know, first first one this season, and uh, lovely, lovely one, lovely one to get. No, brilliant. Like I say, it was it was a, it was a beautiful. It must it must be it must be a good feeling as a jockey when you when you're riding a horse like that, and he's just everything you're asking is just, just going with it. Yeah, oh yes, that's what you want. It's every jockey's dream is armchair ride and just sit there and yeah, um, they do most of the work and, and we get to take all the credit. So um, yeah, no, no, it's it's. Um, <laughs> It, it, it was a dream ride around on him, and, and he's a. As I said, he, he's a. He is just such a likable horse. So, um, Willie, Willie Twist, and trains him basically with you know obviously alongside his dad. But he's um he does most of the work with him and rides him every day, and he absolutely adores him. And 
we grew up together, sort of best mates through school and stuff. So it was nice, sort of that way as well. Is that, that why you got the ride, Tom? Did you did you kick Sam off? No, quite a funny <laughs> story. So this horse was, yeah, obviously hurdler last season. Um, he'd won somewhere and then went to Exeter one day and Sam couldn't ride him. So Willie, that is how I got the ride that day, just through my connection with Willie. So anyway, I went and rode him. He was favourite. He disappointed, finished fourth. Um, Mr. Prue's the owner then probably had his doubts about Tom Bellamy and uh, <laughs> we uh, so he ran his first run this season second run this season was at Cheltenham's October meeting and I don't know if you remember Nico De Boinville rode him because mm -hmm. yeah the, the owner didn't want me fair enough you know they, if he pays the bills that's fair enough and then obviously yeah this time Nico had to ride uh, Mr. Coffee and um Fair play to Willie. He he had my back and said, "No, I think we've got to give Tom a chance. Like he's um he's ridden him before, and uh, and I ride out there a lot as well. So like I, I felt like I deserved my chance. But then when you know all this has gone on, you're sort of going out there. You're not thinking about it. Obviously, once you're on the horse, but like you know, yeah. in the run up to it, I'm just like, geez, I hope this goes well because I won't be seeing this better again if not. But um, yeah, luckily it did. Do you think? Oh well, thankfully, uh, do you think he has to lead, or do you think it's just because he's that straightforward that you just let him go off in front? I I think he might be better taking a lead with a lead. Um, you you just see those mistakes he makes. I think that's because he's going down to fences quite cold. Oh, like he's sort of he, he's he's looking and he's just he's not really taking you as such, and that, and that's why. Well, the mistake I made was because he wasn't taking me, and I really said, right, come on, and, and give him a good old kick down to it. And it probably caught him by surprise a bit. Whereas if he was sort of not you know more keen, but you know, taking you forward, you could you could afford to just give him an inch of rain and go and take the stride, or you'd sit there and and, and you'd have you wouldn't be afraid to pop it because he's taking you in and you've got momentum. So I think I, I think the, the perfect way to ride him would be second or third, a little bit of room. So if you are jumping well and he did, did end up getting a bit keen, you could go for you wouldn't want to be stuck behind one. But um yeah, I just think having one in front of him might just help him a bit. Yeah. Good stuff. Love it. Brilliant. Well, I'm, I'm, thanks for that, uh, Tom. We do appreciate your insight, obviously, there. I mean, I'm going to come to another one of your um, winners lately. Um, I, I'm going to, oh, there, pronounce this right, but <laughs> I've got it written here. Anne Bradan Fisa. Is that about right? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, you won the, the Triumph Hurdle trial uh, pretty impressively. Obviously, got the form behind Bird at Road that everyone's raving about, but. You know, just talk us through that sort of ride. I mean, obviously, juveniles, I'm assuming they're a little bit harder to, to sort of get going. But what were your thoughts on that horse going forward? How do you think it went? What you said there is absolutely right. As a rule, juveniles can be a bit trickier to ride. But this horse, for whatever reason, rides like he's 12 years old. He's an absolute legend. Um, Brilliant. He's really straightforward. Um, Brent, he started his life in Joseph O'Brien's and... Um, Brendan Powell Senior was obviously based over there as his assistant mm. for a while. And he actually told me he was sort of schooling this horse as a two-year-old. And uh, and you can tell, like, you know, sitting on him now, the way he jumps and, and his know-how is just, you know, second to none. And he's um mm. he's a lovely little horse. And um, Jack Jones is a, a trainer who's really, really going places. And he's he's obviously more flat-based, but he's um, done so well with his jumpers so far. And great for him to get a nice horse like that. Fantastic. Do you think he did give a chance of maybe reversing the bird at road form? I know he looks pretty decent, but do you think he got a chance? Be honest, no, probably not. Um, I think bird at road's very, very good. Mm. I'm hoping we won't have to see him again for a while anyway, because uh, I think <laughs> I think um, I think and Brad and Fisa, his plan is to go to the Boodles. So uh, I think right, yeah. Musselburgh on their trials day has been mentioned on the way. Uh, he'll only just have one more run. And then he'll go straight there. But yeah, I think Jack said it in his interview after the race on Saturday. He said um, we'd be fifty to one in the Triumph. Um, yeah. You could go there, have the hardest race of your life, run your heart out, and finish eighth. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas you know you go to the we're off one hundred twenty-seven. I don't know if the handicap will do anything tomorrow. I, I don't think he probably will. We beat a hundred and ten rated horse of level weights, so yeah. hopefully not. Um, you know, you'd like to think you'd go in there with a squeak. 
No, that, that's great. Like you say, you go for the race, you got the best chance in. Uh, yeah. That's brilliant. So fingers crossed for that one then. Uh, the only other one I'm going to ask you about is obviously a massive uh, old uh, favourite of ours, Paisley Park. He rode him in the um, in the long distance hurdle. I mean, obviously, I mean, I, I don't think I've screamed as much at a telly without having a bet on as I did that day. But I mean, just talk us through that. I know obviously you didn't manage to get there, but what were your thoughts going through that race? And, and how, how did you think you were going to get there? What, what, were, you, what were you thinking? Do you know he, he is the dream horse to ride, yeah, and a nightmare horse to ride at the same time <laughs> because he is like he he plays mind games with you. He um yeah, so we we've gone gone around, everything's gone to plan. Um, I wasn't quite sure they'd gone hard enough for us because I, I I've obviously yeah. I, I have ridden him once before in the, the long walk a couple of years ago, but having watched all his races, like he always hits that flat spot. And he hadn't really done it sort of end of the back straight last time. And I thought, oh, does this mean we haven't probably gone quite quick enough for him? So I kind of made him have his flat spot, if you know what I mean. I tried to get him a bit closer. And and to be fair, he got, I knew I had Mar Marie's rock beat fairly quick. And then we straightened up and I had, uh, was it Flight Deck and um, Dasher Drasher had gone on ahead. And I was sort of rowing away alongside Nico and, and I thought, Oh, he's run well. He's probably going to take a blow because a few of them have sometimes need their first run. He he sometimes does as well. Um, I thought, like, right, you've run well. Get your blow in now. And he kind of took a blow three out, and then we're plugging on, plugging on. And I was like, yeah, grand. We might get second in a minute. And then he gets over the last, and he just take. You nearly fall off the back of him. He takes off so much. And <laughs> why can't he just do it ten strides sooner? <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> But he, um, no, he is. He, he's a he's a great old horse, isn't he? And um, yeah, I uh, obviously it's a shame for Aiden to be missing out on him at the moment. But um, we we'd be good friends, and he's very helpful when I ride him and stuff. And he, um, I think he he'd love to see the horse win as much as anybody. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was it was a great race to watch. We spoke about it on on the show after that. Just saying, it was great to see him and uh, Dasha Drasha going at it and. Oh, we just got wrenching. He didn't quite get there, but it's still just a brilliant race to watch. I mean, I'll just quickly bob to you know, Rich. I mean, we obviously love Paisley Park. What did you think of that run before we move on? No, he's one. He's a staying legend any of the game. You know, yeah. I thought it was a great one. You know, he had the five pound penalty, and to go down by a neck, uh, a head. Sorry, was I thought it was honourable. You know, he always runs his race uh, there for some reason, and I think he's got a good chance on Saturday. You know, level weights with Dashel Drasher and. Uh, Reopposes his champ again. I think it's going to be some sort of uh, some sort of good staying race for the UK to find out who's the best. It certainly will, and like I say, we'll cover all that on the preview uh, or the big Christmas special, should I say? Uh, well, that's that then. So, Tom, obviously, we normally come to our guest and um, just sort of ask them for maybe one or two any any horses you're maybe associated with, or you might be riding soon, or anyone that you've got your eye on that you might be looking forward to uh, going forward for the rest of the season. Have you managed to think to think of one, one or two? Yeah. Um... Look, they're horses to, to follow as, as such as have your mortgage on them next time out, if you know what I mean. Like it's, uh, yeah. Uh, so the first one is a horse called Titan Our Belts. I actually rode yep. him on the same day I rode Paisley Park at Newbury in the, um, the Berkshire Novices Chase, whatever that's actually called now. But he um, finished third behind Hermes Allen. And um, he's a lovely, lovely horse. And, and we're going to step him up in trip. He's going to go to the Feltham on Boxing Day, which is, look, obviously a big ask. But um, I think. He'd go there if he finished in, I don't know how many runners there'll be or whatever, but if he could finish in the first three or four, I think there's a, a big handicap in him further down the line. And I, me and Emma sort of had a chat after that run the other day and we said, what do we do with him now? Because do, do you go and try and, you know, nick a little 20 grand sort of not to 135 somewhere? Or do you go, right, let's try and actually, you know, if you, if you go and run in these grade ones or, you know, big graded races, you're, you're gaining proper experience. And your marks hopefully not going to move too much. So yeah, we're, we're um, yeah looking forward looking forward to him. Um, like I say, I'm not saying he's going to go and win the, the Feltham on or I don't, it's not called the Feltham anymore, is it the Corto Star? Sorry. On, oh, on right, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's not going to go and win that on Boxing Day, but he um, well he might do, you never know. And <laughs> the other one was a juvenile of Alan King's called Insanity. Um, he ran for the first time the other day. Graham was a little bit soft for him. He disappointed massively. He he absolutely walked up the running. But I, when I first sat on this horse, we know Kingy's brilliant with the juveniles. And first time I sat on him, I thought this is a, this is one of the ones you know that, that he does so well with. And it's he's a big, strong, 
you know, for a three-year-old big strong horse, and he, um, I think he'll win. He, he probably is one that you can have a little look at next time out. I'd say. Brilliant. We will certainly do that then. Thank you very much for those two. We'll keep an eye out on them, and uh, let's hope we get a nice win out of them at some point down the line. Uh, brilliant. Right. Well, that's it for that segment. Then what we do is now then we like to move on and do our uh, next selections. We've got this is week nine. Uh, we've got eight selections in there already. And I was going to do some graphics, uh, go through and uh, check on the prices, but I've only managed to do one. So <laughs> I've been a little bit busy today, but uh, we're going to go. I'm going to start with you then, Joe. I do have your uh, current team and you'll have to talk us through it. I believe you've got the uh, the current price as well. So if you can talk us through your team and then we'll have your week nine pick and then we'll swing around and then we'll finish on Tom if we can. And we'll get we'll probably get your opinion, Tom, if I can, just on a couple on the selections. Normally, every time we put a selection up, uh, whoever the guest is says how rubbish they are and then they've got no chance. So we'll see what you think <laughs> as well. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a thing that's gone all the way through the, uh, the show so far. But here's your team, Joe. Take it away, my friend. So I'm gonna do the uh, the rich thing. I've got the Ryanair winner there, stage star. <laughs> no, st stage star up there, first pick. Um, into four to one now, probably the biggest mover for me. Um, Iroko obviously being the yard, very unlucky to see him injured for the season. Marine National stays the same as we haven't seen him. Um, El Fabiolo, my captain, eleven to ten, slight move into ten to eleven, nothing major. Brighter days ahead for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle fours. Um, Four to one now from fives, nothing major. Um, Marie's Rock practically doubled in price, 14s to 33s. <laughs> in the pocket, sevens, staying at sevens. And Halka to Debert, tens, staying tens. We haven't seen them and they haven't been entered anywhere yet. Um, and my week nine pick is down memory lane for the Ballymore novice hurdle. Um, now, for me, we haven't seen we haven't seen many out yet for me. Um I would like to see Will Mount um as he has been mentioned for the Ballymore. But when you look through, you've got Ballyburn there at the top of the market. I just wasn't so taken with his performance last time out. Firefox I thought beat him comfortably. Now Gordon Elliott after that race said straight away he settles very well and he's a lot faster than he looks. That was over two mile. That wouldn't surprise me if he's if he's kept him over two mile. And when you look through that race was over two mile. Down memory lane started over two mile one and is a three mile point to point winner. So would definitely get the trip. And I just feel like this horse just starts motoring at the end of the race. I know you 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 can sort of say that a lot when they win on the bridle and they win easily. But when you look through the market, you've got Ballyburn, Firefox, who I think are, well, Ballyburn and Firefox have both been mentioned by trainers as, you know, they are very fast horses that could go supreme. You've got the Willy Bingo there. So, I mean, it's tough to call now, isn't it? But then you've got a dream to share, third in the market. I'm not sure why he's there because he's gone chasing. Um, we haven't seen him. We don't know how he jumps. And then Factor File is going chasing. And then above, below that, you've got Mil Will Mount and Down Memory Lane. I just think we've seen down memory lane this season. I thought it was very, very impressive. He's got a lot of speed, but he's got the stamina there, travels strongly. And owned by JP, I think this could be JP's main hand in this race. Yeah, I mean, it's fair enough. I mean, you, you, you described one of the horses there, I can't remember what it was, uh, we've not seen him, we don't know how he jumps. So it's, I thought you were talking about Marie National then, but um, <laughs> no, I think it's a fair it's a fair cop. Like you say, we're, we're, there's a lot of novices we've not seen yet from Mullins. Is. There's there's a lot that I've run and it's, it's it's tough, but we've kind of done the rounds of the main races, so we're trying to fill up our teams with a couple of novices to have a couple of pokes at each of these races. That's so what I, I mean. I just think, I, I mean, I know you tipped Al Antigua up, and to be fair, a lot of people have jumped on the train but I think it's 16 to 1 put it this way if Dan Memory Lane turns up here he will not be 16 to 1 I mean I, I'd be very surprised he, he looks a real animal to me he still looks a bit novice travels strongly not too keen I like him yeah it's a fair point I mean I'll come to you then uh, Rich I mean I, unfortunately I've not got a graphic of your team I don't know what I've done with it but I've, I've seemed to have lost it so I'm just going to let you talk us through your team yeah. and then we'll put on to your selection sorry mate it's my fault I've had a nightmare today it's because it's that good, that's why. Uh, <laughs> so I've got Fasal Vega for the Arkle. Uh, picked him at 11 to 2. He's now into 11 to 4. Uh, best price. Allo for the Ryanair. Picked at 7s, now into 3s. Uh, so Gerhard for the Stayers at 20 to 1. That's not moved. Mirazur West, who we hopefully will see at Christmas for the Supreme at 8s. Uh, still 8s. Jerry Cologne for the Gold Cup. 
four to one. Uh, West Barbo for the Stayers at 20s. Uh, and last week's was Stella Story for the Albert Bartlett at 25s. Uh, there was Iroka in there, but obviously he's out injured. So uh, that's unfortunate for everybody involved. And he was going to be an exciting one, exciting novice for the staying division for sure. So uh, I've dipped into the brown advisory as like a replacement for him. And I'm pleased to say, Tommy hey. for the brown advisory. So <laughs> I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping this is going to go quicker than when Harry Skelton came on and uh, and shot me down. Uh, so yeah, Broadway boy for the Brown Advisory. It's he's fourteen to one best price now. Uh, so I think he's got a cracking chance. I've just gone through his his form. So he beat Mufasa on Chase debut by nine lengths. Uh, Mufasa's rated one three five now, uh, or he was rated one three five when he beat him. He was second to floor Porter by two and a half lengths. Who was uh, conceding five pounds over three miles. I thought I was a cracking one. Uh, third, third chase one was uh, beating. We've all been caught. It was a one three five chaser, uh, won by twenty lengths over three mile distance. You've got good risk it all in there. Was third and Mister Coffee was fourth. Uh, they're quite highly rated chases at what back about one forty or so. Uh, and then he beat th one three hundred through five at the weekend. He's rated one fifty. So I think. Like uh, like we quickly mentioned before, I think he just keeps on improving. And I think the real lacquer won the Brown Advisor off one five three. I think it was last year. So already, I don't think he's a million miles off it. And if you look at the form, I just think potentially he's done more than Stay Away Fay. I mean, Stay Away Fay beat Giovinco, who's rated one four seven. Uh, I just think that Stay Away Fay normally has like a flat spot in him, whereas I think Broadway Boy will. We'll just keep going. I think that's where he probably wins it. A bit like the real Wacker did against Jerry. He'll just try and win it from the front. And I think he's got a great chance at, uh, at 14s. That's fair. I mean, I'll, I'll bob to you, Tom, if I can. Do, do you think Stay Away Fair and Broadway Boy, if they go at it, what would you think would happen? I think Broadway Boy would break the other one's heart. Oh. I'd really do. Oh. Yeah. I think if they got into... Because the way they... They'll be very similar in the sense, are oh, they wouldn't like? Do you know what I could see happening? I could see. I'm not going to talk about it like it's a horse race now. I know it's not, but um, yeah. just if it was just the two of them turning in together, Broadway Boy would probably be in front, rolling away. Sammy will be pushing. Harry Cobden will probably just start to push off the bend, get to within the, Sammy's quarters, going down to the second last. Maybe just nearly get up size at two out, and I think Broadway Boy will just pull away again. I, I honestly think this. This is a seriously top-notch horse, and I really do. And like, that might be me getting carried away because I haven't ridden many of them, you know, especially not recently as such. Like, especially like a young novice up and coming. Mm. But um, <clears throat> I, I honestly think this is as as good a horse as Twistons have had for a while. Yeah. There you go, Richard. How do you feel about that? Well, slip in the bin then, James. <laughs> 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 That's my stay away fair selection in the bin then. <laughs> no, you're listening to the wrong man anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant well um, fingers crossed for you then Rich but I'm, uh, obviously we're taking each other on so I'll let you get me a pint when um, it happens the other way around uh, so I'll jump into my team then uh, my team currently I obviously had a rock call at the beginning who was obviously out for the season for the, the G&G team um, and I've got week two to Hoopoo six to one for the stairs is now into seven to two so that's pretty decent uh, he obviously beat Il, uh, Imperial Pass uh, Love Envoy for the Mares she's still same price uh, she come back and uh, not but not a bad little uh, comeback run. I thought every ground that stand out it was tough. Uh, Envoy has been nibbled in for the Ryanair Chase, uh, sixteens uh, into fourteens. Dyser Enos probably my favourite one at the moment. Seven to one into nine to two. She looked really good at the the weekend. Uh, Stay away face ten to one into five to one. But apparently she's he's a loser that one. So I'll uh, we'll see how that one goes. Chase Tom. Um, <laughs> Il Atlantique twenty to one for the Ballymore has been nibbled into sixteen to one. Can't wait to see him out again. And obviously, Shanna Bob for the uh, Albert Bartlett. Am I missing one in there, actually? One, two, three, four, five. You missed I'm missing one in there. Uh, I'm missing my week eight pick, but I can't remember who it was now. Oh, no, sorry Shanna, Bob, sorry. Shanna Bob is week eight. Sorry, this did is week little, nine. Did you little lad uh, count up them, James? <laughs> obviously, I don't know how to count. Honestly, I always lose my way. But, yeah, I think the team's looking all right at the moment, so I'm happy with that. Um, 
Like I say, the novices are really tough, but we're just trying to see if we can get on a soundish bet that you think is definitely going to go there and definitely going to be a decent price uh, and get backed in. So my next pick, and you mentioned in your description there, Joe, but my next pick is going to be Will Mount for the Supreme, Supreme. Novice Hurdle, currently 12 to 1 uh, for Henderson. Obviously, it's a tough little... Uh, you know, you're banking on horses who have only run once or twice. I mean, Rich has obviously put Mirza West up, and we've not seen just yet. Uh, he's on holiday with uh, Marine National. Uh, but I'm going to go with Will Mount. He's, you know, you go back through his form. He's obviously an impressive point winner. He's won a, won a few bumpers, run him, uh, won really well. The, the couple at Donny that he won, you know, he walked in them really. The, one, one of, the second one he gave mountains of weight away. I think it was about £22 in the end, but, it, you know, it, they got to work on him and he stayed on strongly and won it quite easily. He's then gone to Henderson from Mulholland's uh, and he's come back this season, had one run over hurdles so far. He looked really impressive to me, to my eye anyway. Uh, he jumped well, he travelled well um, and sort of got him in a nice position and Nico kicked him on and, and that that was that. And so the main thing I quite like about him really is, I mean, if you go back to that second um, bumper run, you know they were having they were having to get get at him a little bit just to keep him up to his work, but he just kept finding and kept finding. I love I love that from a horse. You know they've obviously got Jericho de up in there that uh, look quite interesting and look quite impressive. But I'm just never I'm always a bit wary of horses who kind of win so easily. It makes you think, well, what have they actually beat? But this guy does look pretty decent, and I'm going to take him um, for the supreme. I think that the twelve to one's a decent price. I think he's due to run in uh, over Christmas. I think it was the toll before the channel or something they were mentioning, but I think they're going to go for a bit of a... Uh, I think it's an introductory hurdle on the uh, the same card just to give him another run and then they'll probably step him up in grade, hopefully, and then that's where we'll see the best of him. Uh, and I kind of went through... You know, you go through the race. The Dream to Share is currently favourite. I mean, we're not going to see him till late on in the season, so that would put a, a bit of worry in, in the mind for if you're backing him. And like I said there, Jericho drew up in there. Someone just sort of puts me off him. But, he, I mean, he could be a player, but you're just not sure. He might step up in trips. Same with Mirazor West. You know, a few of people are sort of whispering about him from the bat for the Ballymore. Be interesting to see what he does over Christmas, and then you're getting into the Firefoxes and Ballyburns, and you know, I think they're probably both potentially Ballymore as well. So it's quite it does thin out quite a lot. And you got Daddy Longlegs, who was a four year old, who was who looked really impressive when he run. But again, I'd be a bit wary about backing him. And I just landed on the like, like, I mean, obviously, you look at like Constitution Hill the year he won the Supreme. I know it's, it's not going to be as good as him, but he kind of went under the radar because there were a few Irish horses and John Bond and things like that. And I feel like it's a bit of a similar situation. So, you know, I'm going to take a punt on Will Mount and fingers crossed he'll do all right. What do you think of that, Tom? Yeah, look, he's a, he's a very good horse. And I, I loved him in his. Yeah, well, the horse I'm going to mention that I. I know that run against him was in a bumper at um, Doncaster last year. Uh, mm -hmm. He was called Broomhill Road, a horse of Alan Kings. And don't look at his form now because he has gone the wrong way. But at the time, we thought he was a lovely horse. And um, he get I think Wilmot gave him like over a stone or something ridiculous, and like just literally cantered around and just mm -hmm. yeah handstands. And um, he's then obviously moved to champion trainer, and um, yeah, phenomenal. Like he just. He just looks effortless for him, doesn't it? And he's he's not short of pace. I think he'll he'll be able to stay a trip in time as well. I, Nicky Anderson's just a, a genius in the sense of like so many of his horses run over two miles, but you always find yourself saying the same thing: oh, he could go further. He, he'd be fine if he stays at this trip. He'd be fine on good ground, soft ground. Like, do you know? Like he's just yeah. He just seems to train them to be versatile, and, and I think he's another one that is exactly that. You know, he he looked quite exuberant and fresh first time out, a bit keen in Nico's hands, but. I think that's just going to keep sort of settling down each run and he looks very straightforward and, and just classy. Yeah, that, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. Like I say, he knows what he's doing, does it? Does, does Nick, Nicky? And I think he's going to do the right thing. I think I do think the Supreme will be the target for this guy and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. And they've actually, well, Connections have got another horse. I think a horse called the Enabler won at the weekend and there's a horse that beat him in a point I'll just mention at Kingston Pride. So I'll be keeping an eye out for him. He's only a four year old, but I think they're going straight over the hurdles. I don't think he'll be for Cheltenham, but he looks pretty good as well. So I think Will Mount's the one to be on for me personally. Right then, so I'll come to you then, Tom, Tom if I can. Give us, um, if you have, your Cheltenham Festival anti post banker of the week. I'm going to go for it. Go on. Broadway boy. Hey. Oh, yeah, I'm going to stay loyal. It's, it's look, I, it's, it's the one I know the most about. Um, 
I could give you a boring selection of some odds on earlier in the week or something, but no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a take a punt on him and I think I don't think he'll be going off. Did you say he's fourteen to one at the moment? I don't think yeah, he'll be going off. Fourteen to one at the moment, yep. I think if he wins his next start, he might be half that price. So and I think he will win his next start. Brilliant, cool. I absolutely love that. I'm so just waiting for a jockey to come on and say straight face Constitution Hill for the champion hurdle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that could be, they're like that's a banker, isn't it? But like I just thought I'm not gonna be boring. <laughs> so the Broadway boy Constitution Hill double is the banker of the week. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Well, thank you very much for that, Tom. We do appreciate it. And obviously it's been great having you on. Um, that's it, really. That's what we do on the, the Cheltenham Manti Post countdown show. Like I say, we love talking about Cheltenham. Uh, we are going to have a break now till the new year, so I'll post it up on on Twitter and things like that when we're going to be on next. But uh, yeah, we're sort of halfway now. We'll be building into the Christmas special on Thursday in a big festive period. There'll be loads of movement in the Enterprise markets, no doubt. But uh, like I say, we're going to continue. Um, hopefully, getting good guests on like yourself, Tom. You know, you, you know, we do. Have you, have you had a good time? Have you had a good time? I always ask that. Have you had a good time? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I enjoyed it. Thanks, thanks very much for having me. Glad to. There's the question, have... uh, James, as well. You always ask me to ask the question just before I'm about to ask the question. Do you want to ask the question? <laughs> no, <laughs> so, you ask it. I asked it last week now. So we, we try to ask every single guest who, who comes on if you could ride one between Fasal Vega and Marine National in the Arkle, which one would it be? Oh, I was just trying to remember. You, you've you've all got different ones in your team, haven't you? So I can't keep any, everyone up here, can I? Um, we are split down the middle, basically. I'd probably ride Fasal Vega, hey. only because I really want to ride for Willie Monaghan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Joe, these, they're, they're building up against you, mate. We haven't seen the Marine National yet. We've got a lot James, of you'll Vega. switch over like last year. There's still time. There's still time. <laughs> oh, we shall see. Uh, well, that's it then, guys. So, obviously, thank you very much for watching and tuning in. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we'll have the Christmas special on Thursday. We'll have some more. Um, we'll have some giveaways, free bets, some winners, hopefully. Obviously, we had a lot of winners over the weekend last week, and the charity bets all landed. You know, the big treble. We raised a lot of money for a lot of good causes. So hopefully we'll keep that going. Uh, like I say, we're breaking for Christmas for the Cheltenham show, but we'll be back in the new year with that. And we'll, uh, like I say, like, subscribe. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks again, Tom. Thanks, lads, for, for, for Cheers, giving Tom. your clicks. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, Thanks, see you all again next time. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Cheers, thank, thank you. you. Cheers, Tom.